Hey, this is Tyler with Nanobox. I want, what I want to show you today is how you can use Nanobox to create an instant isolated development environment so you can get right to work coding your awesome application. So let's get right down to it. So I've created an application. This one happens to be written in Python. It's extremely small, trivial, and all it does is return hello world when we hit the root path. This could be any application. Uh, could be Ruby on Rails, could be uh, another Python application, could be Java, could be anything. But in this example, uh, we'll go ahead and use this uh, simple Python application. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to tell Nanobox what our application needs to run. So we do that by creating a box file .yaml configuration file and we specify that we want to use in this case the Python engine uh, to configure the environment within which our application runs. So this would be you know, Ruby if you're using Rails or you know, um, Java if you're, if you're using Java. And uh, there's plenty of other uh, settings, but we'll just uh, keep to the basics here. So now that I've got that, I run over to my uh, terminal and all I'm going to need to do is type nanobox run. Since I've got a box file.yaml, it will now build a f the full environment, install all of the, uh, the, the binaries and, and run times that I need, in this case, Python. And one really quick note as we're waiting for this, this will run on Windows as well as Mac uh, in addition to uh, Linux. So it's uh, completely uh, operating system agnostic. I happen to be using Mac for this demo, but this same process will work on Windows or wherever you are. Okay, and then we get dropped right in to this development environment and we can see that our source code is, is mounted in and I can verify that by uh, catting the contents of my, uh, my program here. And I can also notice that I have uh, Python installed. So with that, all I'll need to do is, is, in order to run the app, all I'll need to do is install some dependencies and, and, um, and then run the app. Okay, now the app is running. So now that the app is running, I can access this app from my browser in order to do it conveniently, I'm going to go ahead and add an alias. And I'm just going to call it flask.dev. That could be anything you want. But what that essentially does is it, it allows us to now go uh, in our browser and hit flask.dev. And it totally works. And we can also see that any changes that we, that we might make here to the application will be reflected inside of this uh, uh, inside of this environment. So if I restart the the web application and reload the page, I can see that the changes are reflected. So you can see that with uh, with very minimal effort, Nanobox can uh, really speed up your development environment and can just uh, make it a breeze to work with. I want to show you one other cool thing: is that notice when I exit this environment that Nanobox shuts it down. It doesn't keep it running in the background. It knows when we're done with it. So uh, if you've got multiple apps that you develop on, you hop into one, do some stuff, and you hop out, it's going to shut it down. It's really efficient that way. And then the other thing, the last thing here that I wanted to show was that uh, you don't have to uh, use Nanobox Run to hop in and then type your commands. In fact, if you wanted to, you could just prefix a command. So if I wanted to know what version of Python I'm running, and it would normally be Python version, well, I can just prefix that command with nanobox run. It will fire up the environment, run the command, and then, and, and then exit, pausing the environment. We can see the output is 2.7.1.3. And so, um, you know, Nanobox makes it really, uh, really easy. It, it, it's completely customized to, to your flow. And I just want to show that I can open up multiple, um, multiple terminals all running, um, all running Nanobox. Uh, maybe one of them is running your, your application. And then the other one is reserved for running other commands. So I can actually see that the application is, is running in here. And 
um, the one takeaway that hopefully the, that, uh, that I can provide here is that when you use Nanobox, your existing workflow, how you develop apps today, is the way that you would develop apps with Nanobox. Nanobox doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, create any new flow that you have to work with. Nanobox gets out of your way and all, and, and all that it provides is an environment that, that has everything that your application needs to run and um, a, a way for you to, to run this application, develop this application, iterate on this application, all the while you're following your normal process with your editor in your desktop, uh, maybe previewing the result uh, in, in your browser. So hopefully this has given you a quick indication of uh, some of the things that, that Nanobox can provide for you uh, in your development workflow. So I encourage you to stay tuned. We've got more details on this subject and actually quite a bit more uh, that Nanobox provides as well. So uh, thanks for watching and I encourage you to come back with the others. Thanks.